Hey, Anthony here with Organically Grown Muscle. I'm gonna help you out today a little bit with some handstand tips, just how to balance. So that definitely is the hardest part of having to handstand when you first start is just learning how to stay up there for five seconds, even four or three feels amazing once you're up there and completely upside down. So the first tip that I'm gonna give you is gonna be on the wall and this has to do with using the hands. So when we're beginning with handstands, I would say we use the hands the most to balance because that's just the easy go-to uh, to be able to stay up there. So it also tends to put a lot of strain and stress on the hands. So you wanna make sure they stay strong and you're doing something uh, to keep those guys healthy. So the first tip I'm gonna give you is walk up the wall, you're gonna face the wall. Now we're gonna work that pressing, right? So I'll give you a little demo here. You're gonna start just walking all the way up and you can go wherever's comfortable for you really. So if you're out here, that's good. If we can go a little closer, that would be great. And now from this position, what we wanna do is same thing we always do, push the ground away, squeeze the butt, suck the stomach in, and then from here, what I want you to think about doing is bringing your foot off so much that you start to fall forward. And then you're going to use your fingers to push your body back onto the wall. So it's going to feel a little funky at first because you're probably going to start feeling like you're going over, going over, and then you'll have to fall over to the side, right? Now the goal with that is going to be when you're bringing your foot off the wall and you want to get back to the wall, you're going to think squeezing the stomach because that's what's going to help engage that movement. But you're going to really think about squeezing the ground as hard as you can and pushing your fingers into the ground. Now that's going to catch you right away, right? So every time I jump, I jump into a handstand, it doesn't matter when, I'm squeezing the ground. So before I go into a handstand, I'm always thinking, what are my hands doing? Squeezing the ground or it's not working right. So when you go up, my first thought is squeeze the ground and then I catch my body. Then I can choose to adjust whether that's pushing the ground away more, squeezing the butt, pointing the toes. And then that whole time, as you can see, my hands are constantly squeezing back and forth. So you need to make sure you know how to do that and you're in control when you're upside down of what your fingers and your hands are doing, right? So make sure that you get a couple reps of those where you're bringing the legs off and driving your body back, all right? So number two, I'm gonna give you this other tip, crow pose. Now this is a huge one that'll help you reach those uh, handstand goals. This is kind of a two tipper in one. So crow pose or headstand. So if you can do something like a headstand, that's gonna give you that same effect with having to grip the ground and give you that effect of the line, right? So you can even use a wall. Again, the wall helps with everything. You can even use a wall to do this. So if you can do a crow without the wall, let's say you're one of those people, hands on the ground. What we're gonna do is just go up into that crow pose. So different ways to do crow pose. You can go all the way up with the knees, best way to do it, all the way out, whatever's working for you at the time, right? We're working on handstands. This is kind of an accessory exercise at this point. So we're leaning in, feet are up, and then you're just gonna focus on pressing into the ground with your fingertips. So the whole time you're balancing and pressing into your fingertips. If you can, try not to drop all the way down, just stay up there, but the whole time you're just focusing on the squeeze. So I can just squeeze back and forth and I can feel myself balancing and almost having to squeeze my stomach to not keep going backwards because of the force of my fingers, right? Now, same thing, you can use the wall and just start leaning in, bring your head to the wall, and then you have the fingertip action, right? And this one, putting a handstand workout I did, you can just push yourself all the way off and that'll actually get, or help you uh, learn that force of having to come off the wall every time. So that's gonna be another really good option. Now, if you can and you're willing to go up into a headstand, you could grab something soft, that might help, first of all. And what we're gonna do is go up into a headstand onto the wall. So you can do it without the wall as well. Another really good accessory exercise just for the handstands. So this is gonna, again, help with the line now 
and the balance at the fingers. So we're going to kick up, up, we're going to keep the head on the ground, we're not going to kick up, head on the ground, and then what I want you to think with this one, if you can do headstand, not going to teach you too much about the headstand right now, you're just going to kick up all the way to the wall, give it a strong kick, and then we're going to try to bring the feet off the wall. Now when I'm in the position, I'm putting pressure into my hands rather than my head. So I'm squeezing my hands, almost like I'm pushing myself up, but I'm not. And squeeze my butt, quads, so that you're taking some, oh, I need a mat for that, taking the pressure off of your head a little bit, right? And putting it all into the hands. And that's gonna teach you gripping back and forth, which is really, really gonna help when you're upside down, because now, since you're already in the headstand, you're learning how to keep that form with the hips and the stomach and the glutes, right? Because that's gonna be another huge component of balancing. So another one that I think you guys really need to focus on when it comes to the balance aspect of the handstand is what you're doing with the lower half of your body. So now when a lot of people are doing this, they're just being lazy with their legs and that's how you get those banana handstands, which I am guilty of as well, especially trying harder exercises. You need to really focus on glutes and quad engagement, core engagement, all of those all together at the same time, right? So what you wanna think about is they're working as one unit. So if I'm standing up tall just like this, I'm squeezing my butt, squeezing my quads so my legs are straight, and then I'm sucking my stomach in. So that's the exact position you should be in when you're in a handstand, except toes pointed, but I'm standing. So that exact position, you can go on your tiptoes, when you're upside down. When you do that, your balance is going to be a million times easier. The reason being is one, taking pressure off the wrist. Two, you're keeping your body stacked. So you don't have to focus so much on going back and forth with your hands, right? So when we're in a banana handstand and we kick up and we can't keep that, that straight line, we start to go backwards like so. I don't know if I can hold it like this and the body is putting all the pressure on the back, right? So what we want to try to think about doing is squeezing the butt so that we can point the toes forward and then squeeze the quads. And then everything will straighten out a lot more because now that's active rather than allowing it to just stretch out, right? Because when I'm leaning back like that, I'm not as active with the glutes, not as active with the stomach. So that's going to be a huge, huge component of just the balance aspect. So a really good way to work on that one, I would say, is just going to be facing the wall holds. Uh, the reason being is because you're holding that position and you can actually just squeeze your butt and glutes the whole time, right? So the whole time you're up there, you're focusing on that position. Now, if that's something that is too difficult at this moment, there are other options. So I really like doing hollows for this. The reason being, when you're in a hollow, you're trying to mimic the position, right? So I'm squeezing my quads, sucking my stomach in, and then I'm also trying to keep my low back flat on the ground. This way, I'm working the whole part of my low body just how it should be upside down, rather than creating that arch like we normally do when we're in a handstand. So I would say those are the things that are gonna really help you out, learn how to balance right away. Remember, incorporate these throughout the week. Handstand's not something that's just gonna come all of a sudden, right? You gotta really focus on it. It takes dedication, which I know all of you guys have, but just trust the process. Don't buy into those 30-day handstand programs. It's a bunch of bullshit. There's no 30-day handstanding. You're taking time, you're taking dedication, and you're caring for yourself, which is awesome. So teach yourself a new skill, work on these, and I think that's something that's gonna really help you just get that balance down to start. And then you start working on more advanced movements of it. So I'll have some more videos out for you guys. I'm gonna do a handstand workshop here again soon, so I hope some of you guys can make it. And go to organicallygrownmuscle.com where you can join us on a Zoom workout sometime or even join my online training program. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you all soon. Oh, 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 oh,